Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about Sunesh. As we've seen with the last image of the roadmap, Sunesh is likely going to get some DLC at the beginning of 2024. It's a while away, yes, but today is my birthday and I want to talk about my favorite faction. As you guys are aware, I'm a big fan of Sunesh, not just in Total War, but I play Suneshi factions in pretty much every Warhammer setting, 40k, Fantasy, Age of Sigmar, and even 30k too, so I'm really excited that Sunesh is is going to get some DLC, as there's a few things that I do want. Admittedly, there's not much left for Sunesh in terms of DLC, so I believe that this might be the first and last Sunesh dedicated DLC, but I think that's perfectly fine as long as the missing stuff gets added. Before anything, Sunesh as a faction is perfectly fine, don't get me wrong, the mechanics are good, and obviously the stuff is working as intended now, chariots are uh, working, they're doing a lot of damage. There was a few nerfs here and there, but it's understandable considering how well it performs in multiplayer, even though I still believe that multiplayer and campaign balancing should be done separately. Unit-wise, there's a lot of variety. Champions of Chaos was very kind to the Monogod factions by adding in the Lord options, the Hero options, and obviously the large amount of units. This gave Sunesh a pretty good bonus in terms of actually having a anvil to their hammer attacks, and I'm very, very happy but a few things could make it even better. We'll talk about the legendary characters, and the only legendary lord that I personally want is D'Challa the Denied One, a rather interesting Suneshi mortal character, well, more demon kin than anything else, as, as you can see she is um, very mutated. But we know quite a deal about this character, she was introduced way back in around 5th edition, she even showed up in the end times too, and she has her own faction. Her warband is actually known as the Tormentors. Let me give you some backstory on this character, as there's quite a lot. So, she was born in Nagarif, and as you can already tell, if you know some High Elf lore, nothing good ever happens there. She's the daughter of a mighty High Elven warrior who even fought alongside a Narian, and she was said to be extremely beautiful. So much so that the demon prince of Sunesh, Samael, was instantly attracted to her and sought to make her his concubine. Now, the demon tried various different tactics to claim her, including harassing her father and family in an effort to say, listen, if you you give me your daughter, I will stop bothering you. The father originally denied this, but as you can tell by this character, yeah, he eventually decided, yeah, this was probably going to be the best option. Something horrific, in all honesty, because a father basically giving up their child is absolutely disgusting, but this is what happened. Once again, proving that High Elves are one of the most unlikable factions in the whole of Warhammer Fantasy, but she ended up going to Samael. It can be imagined that she was tortured in an effort to make her beauty his forever, but something rather interesting happened. Samael promised that if D'Challa was a willing concubine, he would allow her to enact revenge on her family, which obviously I don't blame her. I mean, she did have to marry the demon, but at the end of the day, revenge is still something that is very common in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting, though. You see, when she slaughtered her family, Sunesh's gaze actually fell upon her, with the Dark Prince of Pleasure noting how much potential the Chala actually has. This obviously led to Samael becoming rather jealous, but the Chala fell more and more into the corruption of Keros, being one of the very few High Elves that we do know that have completely fallen. The Chala was her own being. She did not want to be a servant of Samael. She wished to be a servant devoted wholly to Sunesh, and this is something that she made out to do. She escaped Samael and went off to do her own thing, eventually forming her own warband known as the Tormentors. Samael naturally complained to Sunesh, which is kind of odd, but hey, and Sonesh didn't really want to take too much part in this, saying that he was too arrogant and offered a bit of a compromise. Samael could have the Chala if he so wished, but only if she returned by her own free will. If she did so, then he could do whatever he pleased to her. However, if she did not, then that was up to her. But as long as Samael existed, D'Challa would not be able to ascend to demonhood, leaving her in the perpetual state of demonkin as we see right now. She is a melee fighter, she was absolutely great at fighting in melee combat in the tabletop, as you can imagine. Having six arms kinda does help, as you can carry a weapon with each arm. 
And she's absolutely awesome. She's one of my favorite characters. I absolutely adore her. So much so that I own three printings of this exact miniature. One of which is painted, one of which is new in box, and the other one is uh, something I got as a gift last year, actually. Yes, I know the miniature hasn't really aged well, <laughs> let's be very honest. She's not exactly pretty, but Creative Assembly have done wonderful things with updating all the miniatures to look a little bit better when it comes to Total War, like for example Nakari, who didn't have a miniature, but did have some art, the new stuff looks great, so I imagine that they could do a great job here too. Now I imagine that legendary heroes will be common throughout this DLC pack too, and there's two choices here, the first being the Mask of Sunesh. A herald, which I know a lot of people would expect as a lord character, I just don't know how that could work considering that she doesn't really lead armies. See, the Mask of Sunesh is known as the Eternal Dancer for a good reason. She was a favoured demonette of the Dark Prince of Pleasure, however, when Sunesh lost the battle, she danced for Sunesh as expected, yet Sunesh took it as an insult. I'm not too sure why Sunesh would take this as an insult, considering that the Mask had done this for many times before, but because of this, the Mask of Sunesh was cursed. Having to dance through both the immortal and mortal realms, never able to stop. In fact, the dancing was used as stances on the tabletop to be able to do some different types of effects, and really, the mask can't do anything barring dancing and moving around, can't even join units on the tabletop, and it's not a bad character, I must admit, even the new Sunesh uh, Age of Sigmar version for the mask looks very, very cool, but I see this more as a legendary hero because of it, possibly able to boost up demonettes in general, anything that's a foot troop, to be able to make them move around, do some really heavy damage, I don't know how this could actually work, to be honest. If anything, she could be turned into a character killer, as those dancers were actually quite interesting on the tabletop. She's not the most interesting one, I must admit. Even I, as a big Sunesh fan, kind of see this as a legendary hero, but not really a much-needed character. But it's very possible that Creative Assembly could have something rather interesting for her, so it's only a matter of time until we find out. It could be that we might not see Heralds for a while, and the Heralds will make a DLC in the future. Maybe a Champions of Chaos style pack for the demons, but um, we don't know. We don't know. The fact is, I don't expect new demon units too, but there are a few ones that are quite old. However, they want to bring in a rather interesting character. There's always Stierkar, a champion of Sunesh, a leader of a Norse tribe, but I imagine that um, Norska won't turn into an undivided root, or divided root better, and finally, he was also a hero choice during Sixth Edition uh, because of the whole Storm of Chaos. He was one of Archeon's lieutenants. So, the character himself is pretty interesting. The fact is that he was born into a Norskin tribe. His father was the Marauder chieftain of this tribe and was always treated fairly harshly. The fact is that this Norskin tribe, like many others, believe that respect and power must be earned, not given to you by some uh, nepotism form. Which means that Stilkar, unfortunately, did suffer quite a lot of beatings from his father. One example is when young Stilkar got into a fight with another warrior and had been beaten up. His father had him whipped until his back was bloodied and flayed bare of its skin. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's positive reinforcement, isn't it? Well, to a Norskin standard at the very least. There were many examples of this. However, Stilkar kind of just dealt with it. You see, from the very beginning, from a very young age, a Shadow Fiend had been in contact with him and whispered many, many promises of the future. A sort of bond of friendship, in a sense. The only stipulation of this friendship was that Stierkar could not tell anyone that the demon was whispering to him. Because of this, the relationship was fairly good. You see, the demon actually protected Stierkar. While Stierkar would get beatings, he would whisper into the warrior's ear certain words and secrets to make sure that the beatings were less as severe as they should be. As the years went on, the demon would help Stierkar become more charismatic, more powerful, and this really began to show. He had become very popular, making friends without uh, much issue. He was respected by his peers, even though he received no favoritism from his father, 
and he became a mighty warrior, subduing rival tribes, Kurgans to the north, and even leading many raids to the southern territories of the Empire and the Bretonians. His father was ever the fawn at his side, resenting his son for one reason or another, which would obviously not end well for his father as he was slaughtered by his own son as... Stirkar felt the many blessings of Sinesh course through him. His father was slain and Stirkar took over the tribe, damning them to the will of the Dark Prince of Pleasure by creating a massive altar in his name. Stirkar, as you can see from the image, rides atop of a very special steed of Sinesh. These are known as the, basically the Boop Snakes. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the names that the fan base have called it. But he's a very competent warrior. He's got one of the best looking models for the Suneshi range for quite some time. Uh, recently, the Age of Sigmar range has been getting to that point. But you can tell that the, even the Age of Sigmar models have been heavily inspired by him. He's actually got a fair amount of lore and he would be a great character to have for all the Suneshi factions. Don't get me wrong, in a perfect world we'd have him as a lord too, but I'd rather not have a Norsk and Sonesh faction. Um, I'd rather Norska be turned into its own thing, not just Chaos Light. This character could be a perfect legendary hero, good at melee combat, obviously being quite good at heavy cavalry, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, out of the two, this one is my favorite. I mean, at the end of the day, Creative Assembly could decide on the mask and I'll still be happy, but it would be a shame if we didn't get Stirkar, considering how original he does look. Alright, so let's just jump in with the missing generic stuff. We have to talk about the fact that the Chaos uh, faction of Sinesh, even the Chaos Warriors, are missing the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Sinesh and the Exalted Hero of Sinesh. So a melee hero and a Spellcaster Lord. Obviously we do have Spellcaster Lords with the Heralds, but it would be nice if we had that, as that could also work with the Warriors of Chaos and just kind of fix that up a little bit. I know that variants aren't really the most exciting thing, and I've said this in every video, but it does help to have the option there. It does help to have... Uh, the variety because while you might not play it someone else will I would love some chaos sorcerer lords uh, Which would be decent at melee, but obviously better focused on spell casting So it's not just getting my lord to become a demon prince because sometimes I don't want them to be demon princes now We need to look towards the serpent of Sinesh. Yes, this is the boob snake and uh, keep in mind We're gonna be talking about this a lot this video as It needs to be turned into a mount option not just for units, but also characters too uh, obviously Stirkar has one, but it would be great if we saw them for the generic lord and heroes as right now Zinch and Korn, the mortal lords, have access to their god-touched mounts, the Disc of Zinch and obviously the Juggernaut of Korn. But Slanesh and Nurgle do not have access to their mounts, which is a massive shame. I would love to see the Serpent of Slanesh as a mount option for the uh, Sunashi characters, and then obviously a Rotfly for the Nurgle ones, because it just makes a lot of sense. It's much more thematic than riding on a demon pony. Don't get me wrong, the demon ponies are good, but having a proper god-touched mount would be absolutely phenomenal. But we're going to continue talking about this mount in the form of a new unit. Yes, like I said, it's going to be featured a lot. This is the Pleasure Seeker of Sunesh. It was actually something that was during the Storm of Chaos. There was a lot of new things introduced there, which were basically just kit bashers. I think that's why people like the Storm of Chaos so much. But yeah, these would be fast, hard-hitting demonet mounts, and essentially, it's a shock cavalry, right? And I know what you're gonna say, we've already got shock cavalry with like the heart seekers or just the standard seekers, but this is going to be a heavy shock. It's not supposed to be moving in and out, it's supposed to go in there and then start doing damage, staying there as much as possible. This isn't a fast moving mount, unless they decide to make it quite fast. It was decently fast on the tabletop, but the idea is just straight in hammer anvil style, right? Let's be honest here, this is pretty much the only missing Sinesh unit in the roster and it would definitely make sense to have them in because if they're going to do it as man options, if they're going to give it to Stirkar, they might as well give it to the Demonettes also so everyone gets to play around with it. I mean, hell, you know, it's a cool mount. I know a lot of people aren't really interested in Sinesh, but it's a cool mount for me. I'm a big fan. I've got a few Pleasure Seekers myself. It was a very expensive kit bash, I'll be very honest with you, as you needed the old Juan Diaz Demonettes. And obviously you needed to buy steered car a few times, but it was definitely worth it because it's just really, really cool. Actually, I've just remembered back then you could actually buy bits. Yeah, I know. How weird is that? You could actually buy bits from Games Workshop. 
so long ago, I just don't remember that anymore. Well, it's taken a while to remember, better yet said. Now, we're going to talk about something more original, which is the Slangor. This is something that's been missing for a while, and obviously a lot of people do want it, because God Touch Gores is something that we want from all the Mono God factions. You know, Corn Gores, Zan Gores, Pester Gores, and Slan Gores. Now, the thing is that the Slan Gores have changed. Originally, they were just Bester Gores. Essentially, it's just that. We've seen some new artwork come from them with Chaos and Conquest. That's the mobile game, which just kind of brought them into a new style, giving them javelins and so on, which would be kind of cool as a uh, range unit. I really, really do think that Sunesh should have some range units. Or there's the Age of Sigmar variant, which is the... Uh, Kind of the size of the Chaos Spawn, really. It would be cool to have them Chaos Spawn size, because that means that you could have a fast-moving skirmishing unit, which would also benefit the Beastmen too. And would be cool if you could also get them with like a Zazel and Sigvald and so on. Uh, in general, I really am a big fan of Slang Gores. God Touch Gores really need to happen. We just don't know what's happening, because I don't think even Games Workshop knows what's happening with the uh, God Touch Gores. Like, we have a new Pestigore for Blood Bowl, uh, we've not seen Pestigores yet for Age of Sigma, same as Corn Gores, but the others are done, and I think it would be kind of cool. I don't know, I'm going to say that the range version, so a standard Pestigore size would be pretty interesting. You could have them mounted and do a little bit of damage like that, but well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. There's so many interpretations for these ones, and barely any of them actually get used, tabletop-wise at least. And we're coming back to the snakes. I know, I know, you're tired of hearing about snakes, but we have to take into account one thing. The Warriors of Chaos don't really have any mounted units in the Suneshi form, right? We have Skull Crushers for corn, but we do need the rest of them, right? And I think that it's about time that we started getting some Serpents of Sunesh with some Suneshi aspiring champions. I don't know exactly what they're going to do here, as a unit of such never really existed, but it might be about time. You see, this would benefit the Warriors of Chaos and it would also benefit the Monogod faction. As I'm thinking, you know, just like you can turn the, uh, you know, Chaos Warriors of Corn into Skull Crushers, this is something that would affect everyone, right? For the Sunesh factions at least. And again, they would kind of look similar to Steerkar, obviously a bit different. It's just something that I've been hoping for for a long time now. As they look cool, the helmet is obviously very stylized. It obviously wouldn't have to be like a direct copy, but that means that we could have aspiring champions on mounts, so you could have a heavy shock cavalry for the mono gods and a heavy shock cavalry for the Warriors of Chaos if you decide to go the Sunesh route. Once we're at it too, it would be great if we had aspiring champions for Sunesh. We've already spoken about it, about, you know, Nurgle having possibly Blight Kings. Sunesh didn't have anything. It's a massive shame. But this is the time to remedy that, considering the fact that we've seen this happen before. We never had Chaos Warriors of Sunesh with uh, Hell Scourges, for example. But thanks to Total War Warhammer, we do. So it would be great if we had something like that on foot. I just want a few more toys here because I feel like that's going to be very, very useful. And it's something that could be expected. There's obviously a space when you look at the Warriors of Chaos mechanic of the Warband system for Sunesh. There's definitely a space there. Like there is a space for most of the factions actually for the Warriors of Chaos. Now, yeah, here we are. There's not a lot missing and you know, that's actually a good thing. We spent more time talking about the characters than anything else. And I think that's a testament to the fact that Sunesh is almost pretty much done. As much as I'd love to see new demons, it's been 20 years or so since we've seen new demons, and I very much doubt that we're going to get the stuff from Age of Sigma. I know, I know a lot of people want the Age of Sigma units, and truth be told, I do too, but I imagine that they'll want to keep it separate because it kind of feels like they're going to be doing that with Old World since we know that there's not going to be backward compatibility. The Old World thing and the compatibility thing was confirmed by Games Workshop themselves at Warhammer World, uh, Warhammer Fest, sorry. But yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. These are my picks. I just really want the Serpents of Sunesh. I really want Dachala. I want to see her updated and Steer Car would be amazing. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Is there anything that you would add into it? And uh, yeah, let's have a little bit of a discussion, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.